everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet sparkling clean dishcloths. This is a great all-purpose pattern, and there's a variety of sizes, and you can find just the perfect one for whatever it is you need for around the house. And for this project, you'll need some cotton dishcloth yarn. I used lots of colors for mine. And you'll also need a five millimeter H crochet hook. And you'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle to weave the ends in when you're finished crocheting your dishcloth. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the variety of sizes I have here. This pattern is available in four different sizes. We have an extra small, which you can use as like a pot scrubby or something like that. And that measures 5.5 inches by 5.5 inches. Then there's the small size, and that one is 6.5 inches by 6.5 inches. The medium size is 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches. And the large size measures 8.5 inches by 8.5 inches. So you can pick the one that best suits your needs, or you can give these as a set for someone maybe who's uh, moving into a new home or starting off or something like that. And I use lots of different colors and made mine cheerful. You can make those to match the decor of your home or the person that you're giving it to. And let's get started. We're going to crochet the smallest size and we're just going to do the first few rows and I'll tell you also how to do the other sizes as well. So let's begin. To begin our sparkling clean dishcloth we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot wrap the yarn around your fingers and make a loop. Then bring the yarn behind the loop so it makes a circle with a line through it. Reach in with your crochet hook, bring up the loop and tighten it. And like I said before, we're going to be making the smaller size here. So for the smaller size, we can zoom out just a hair here, okay? For the smaller size, this is what I'm calling the extra small. That is a starting chain of 22. The small has a starting chain of 26. The medium has a starting chain of 30 and the large has a starting chain of 34. And I'll put these up on the screen now so you can jot them down if you need to. So we've put a slip knot on our hook and we're gonna do the extra small, so that's a chain 22. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, and twenty two. So this is our starting chain. So to do the foundation row, we're going to work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. This loop here does not count, so we're going to count one, two. To make a single crochet, insert your hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. Next, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then we're going to skip three chains. One, two, three, and in that next chain we'll work another single crochet. Just like that. So it should make a big loop like that. Next we'll chain three again. One, two, three, skip three chains. One, two, three, in the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain three again. One, two, three. Skip three chains. One, two, three. In the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain three. 
just pull a little bit of yarn here. So you're gonna get something that looks like this, kind of like large rings here. Next, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and skip three chains. One, two, three. In the next chain, work a single crochet. We're just repeating the same sequence all the way across. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip three chains, one, two, three. And in that very last chain, we'll work a single crochet. So your foundation row should look like this. Now, depending on what size you're doing of all of our sizes here, obviously we're doing the small ones so we have less loops, but the larger in size you go up, you'll have more of these loops along the bottom. To move on to row one, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Then we're gonna work th in this first loop here that we've created, we're going to work three double crochets. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into this loop, bring up a loop just like that, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Double crochet. And you can slide these over a little bit if you need to. So we're gonna work two more double crochets a total of three. So it'll look kind of like that. It's a little, this first row tends to be a little bit loose, but that's okay. Everything is going to kind of straighten itself out. So it'll look kind of like that. And then we're going to chain one. And then in this next loop here, we're going to do the same thing three double crochet. One, two, whoops. There we go. And three, just like that and kind of straighten everything out and just kind of straighten these stitches out. Then we're going to chain one and then in the next loop here we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain one, in the next loop, one, two, and three. Pull some more yarn out, just like that. Then we're going to chain one. And then we've come to our last loop. We're gonna do the same thing. Three double crochet. One, two, three. You can kind of straighten everything out here. Like that. To finish off row one, we're going to work a double crochet in the turning chain here, right at the end. You might have to locate it a little bit, but we found that little loop there at the end. So just work a double crochet to finish off the row, just like that. So if our foundation row is complete. Let's move on to row two. To work row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. In this first space here, we're going to work a single crochet. 
just like that. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then in the next space, so here we have our little cluster here of three double crochets, and then it created a space when we worked a chain in between that, and then another cluster of double crochets. So that space that we worked in between the clusters, we're going to work a single crochet. And I refer to that in the written pattern on the Fiberflex blog as the chain one space, because that space was created by working a chain. So work a single crochet in that space, and then chain three. One, two, three. Move on to the next chain one space. Work a single crochet right into that space. Chain three. One, two, three. Move on to the next space. Work a single crochet right into the space. Chain three. One, two, three. Pull some more yarn out. Work a single crochet in the next chain one space. And then we'll chain three. One, two, three. To finish off row two, we're going to work a single crochet in this turning chain. From the previous row, when we worked a turning chain and turned our work, it created a little space here. We'll just go ahead and work a single crochet right into that turning chain space. Just like that. So row two is complete. And what we've done, when we made our loops in our foundation row, what we've done is also created more loops. So we can go ahead and repeat row one again by working double crochets into those loops. So to finish your dishcloth, you're just going to keep repeating rows one and two. And you can make yours as tall as you like. I simply worked mine until the width and the height were equal. Actually, this was upside down. There we go. So I worked mine until the width and the height were equal for all of the sizes. You can obviously make yours however tall and wide you like. And I just wanted to show you really quick. So we're just going to keep repeating rows one and two. So to move on to repeating row one again, we'll just chain three, one, two, three, and turn. And then I just wanted to show you this first loop here, you would just work again, three double crochets and a chain one, and that'll give you the same look all the way up. So to finish off your work, let me just show you that part. To finish off your work, you're gonna take your scissors and break the yarn. And then you'll just fasten off like that. Then you'll take your tapestry needle and or yarn needle, whatever you like to call it, and thread it with a little tail. And then you can kind of just run the tapestry needle through the stitches. I like to go in one direction with the tail and then come back in the other direction to kind of lock those tails into place. Then you can give your tail a little tiny tug, trim, and then kind of just pull everything into place and your tail will be woven in. You'll have two tails, so you'll want to weave this one in as well. So our sparkling clean dishcloth sampler is complete and you can make a whole set of these or you can um, just make one to suit your needs. This is a large one that makes a great all-purpose dishcloth. You can also use these um, as a trivet or something like that. So that is how you crochet the sparkling clean dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again!